Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and actually I'm going to start a playlist on backtracking and in that playlist we'll be discussing variety of questions on backtracking which has been asked in many interviews, okay? And in this video also I'll be discussing one question which is on backtracking, right? So let's jump on to the problem statement, okay? Now, so the problem is uh, you'll be given a matrix like this. This is the matrix and what you need to do, you need to find out all the possible paths of that matrix. But there is one condition. The condition is you can either move to the right or to the bottom. Okay, so these are the possible directions that you need to follow. So let me draw one path here. This is the first possible path 1, 4, 7, 8, and 9. So what you need to do, you need to print all these elements. So like this 1, 4, 7, 8, and 9. Okay, now let me draw the second path 1, 2, 3. Then we have 6 and 9. So this is the second path, right? So here you can see that I'm uh, moving right or bottom, okay? You cannot move diagonally. This path is not possible, okay? Now let me draw the another path here. 1, 4, 5, then we have 6 and 9, okay? So this is the third path, right? This is the first one. Here we have second one. And this is the third one. So what you need to do, you need to print all possible paths of any given matrix, okay? Now here I have created uh, a vector in which we'll be storing all these elements and this is the function call stack because we'll be using recursion in our function so this is the call stack for that okay now here I have written one two three now one two three is actually the steps that we are going to implement in this function so this is the first step this is the second step and this is the third step right so first second third are the steps that I have written here so here I have created this function that we'll be using for solving our problem, right? And here you can see uh, some parameters that I've passed. So the first parameter is the matrix which we'll be using. And then after that we have vector for storing the elements that we'll be printing. Like this, 1, 4, 7, 8 and 9. So all these elements will be storing in that vector. And then here we have i, j, n and m. So these are the coordinates of the elements. The initial value of i and j will be 0, 0 because the coordinate of 1 is 0, 0 and the initial value of n and m will be 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, here you can see that uh, the, this matrix has 3 rows and 3 columns as well. Okay, So that's why the coordinate of 9 is 2, 2, 2. So these are the initial values of i, j and n and m. Okay, Now here just a second, let me rub this first. Alright, so this function will be called from min and will pass all these parameters there, right? So the first condition is this. Here we are just checking the overflow uh, condition of matrix. Let's say if I'm at this position, so we can move either right or bottom. But it is not possible for us to move to bottom okay because there is no element below 7 right so this is the condition for that and after that we just need to push that element inside the vector so let me just push one here okay just a second so we'll push one inside this vector okay and this step is completed now we are back to this if condition and here we are just checking whether the coordinate of the present element is equal to the coordinate of last element or not right because after reaching the last element, we need to print the whole path of the matrix, okay? So this if condition is for that. And one more thing, here we have three rows and three columns as well. And the value of uh, the coordinate of 1 is 0, 0, right? And the coordinate of 9 is 2, comma 2, okay? And here, the value of, the initial value of i and j is 0. And the initial value of n and m is 2, right? These are the initial values. So whenever we reach the last element of the matrix, we need to print the whole vector, okay? And there is no return statement here, okay? So this is uh, the if condition for that. And after this if condition here, we have two recursive case, okay? So in the first recursive case, we are just incrementing the value of i by 1 but the value of j will remain constant okay so and one more thing that 
uh, we just need to call this function in main and this is the function called stack for that so let me write the value of i in j here okay for better understanding the initial value of i in j is 0 and now we just need to execute uh, step number 1 for this function called stack right that is step number 1 so let me mark it here and now the value of i becomes 1 and the value of j will remain 0 the value of i is 1 and the value of j is 0 and we are back to this if condition because this is the recursion right and here the condition is not true after that we just need to push matrix of 1 comma 0 which is this element so we'll push 4 inside this vector okay and this if condition is not true because we are not at the last element so we'll execute step number 1 again and now the value of i will become 2 the value of j will remain same okay so step 1 is executed for this function called stack right and now we are back to this if condition and here the condition is false after that we just need to push matrix of 2 comma 0 which is this element so we'll push 7 inside this vector okay and this if condition is not true then we'll execute step number 1 again which is to increment the value of i by 1 so and one more thing is that uh, for 2 comma 0 step 1 is executed okay so we'll mark it here and we'll increment the value of i by 1 which becomes 3 but the value of j will remain 0 right so we are at this if condition here and now the value of i is 3 and the value of n is 2 so this condition is satisfied right so we'll return back to the function from where it is called means we'll return back to this function called stack because this if condition is handling the overflow condition of this matrix overflow condition okay and 3 comma 0 doesn't exist inside this matrix that's why we are returning to the previous function called stack right okay so let me remove this from here and for this function called stack only one step is executed so we need to execute step number two and three okay so for step number two uh, we just need to increment the value of j by one right and uh, the initial value of j is zero so we'll increment it by one so it becomes two comma one step two is done and now we are back to uh, this if condition and the condition is not true after that we just need to push matrix of 2 comma 1 which is this element so we'll push 8 inside this vector right and after that uh, we just need to check whether we are at the last element so uh, we are not at the last element and then we'll execute this recursive condition so here we just need to increment the value of i by 1 which becomes 3 comma 1 so for this function called stack step one is completed and we are again back to this if condition right now the value of i is 3 and the value of n is 1 so this condition is true so we'll return back to the previous function called stack because 3 comma 1 doesn't exist inside this matrix this is the condition for overflow right okay so let me remove this from here and we are at this function called stack now right now for this function called stack only one step is executed so we need to execute step number two and three at step number two we are just incrementing the value of j by one so the j the value of j will become two okay step two is done now we are back to this if condition and the value of i is 2 and the value of n is also 2 but 2 is not greater than 2 okay same case is with j and m so it is false now we just need to push a matrix of 2 comma 2 which is 9 so we'll push 9 inside this vector okay and after that at this if condition uh, we are actually at the last element okay so we need to print the vector now so we'll print 1 4 7 8 and 9 okay 
will print all the elements of that vector okay and after that we'll be executing step number one for this function called stack now at step one we just need to increment the value of i by one so it becomes three comma two the value of j will remain same step one is done since the value of i is three and the value of n is two means this condition got satisfied so we'll return back to the function from where it is called okay because this is the case of overflow right let me remove this from here now for 2 comma 2 step 1 is completed uh, we need to execute step number 2 now so at step number 2 we just need to increment the value of j by 1 which becomes 2 comma 3 okay and we are again back to the if condition and here this condition got satisfied means the value of j is 3 and the value of m is 2 okay so this condition got satisfied and we'll return back to the function from where it is called we are again back to uh, this function called stack right let me remove this from here all right so for 2 comma 2 uh, step 1 and step 2 are completed so we need to execute step number 3 and at step number 3 we are just popping out the last element from the vector okay so let's execute step number 3 here and we'll remove 9 from vector alright so all the steps for this function called stack is completed and we can remove this from here right now we are back to this function called stack and for this function called stack uh, step 1 and step 2 are completed so we need to execute step number 3 and we just need to pop out the last element so we'll pop 8 from this vector right and for this function called stack all the steps are completed so we'll remove this from here and we are again back to this function called stack and for this also uh, we need to remove the last element so let's remove 7 from here okay and let me delete it from here as well because all the three steps are completed right now we are back to this function called stack and for this one only one step is executed so we need to execute step number two and three so let's execute step number two and here we just need to increment the value of j by one right the value of i will remain same and the value of j will become one okay so we are back to this if condition and here the condition is not true uh, we just need to pop uh, we just need to push a matrix of one comma one which is five we'll push five inside this vector okay now this if condition is not true because we are not at the last element right so we'll execute this recursive call the first one so here we are just we just need to increment the value of i by one so previously it was one so let's increment that it becomes two comma one the value of j will remain constant okay so the first step is completed for this function called stack right now we are again back to this if condition and the condition is false so we'll push matrix of two comma one which is eight we'll push eight inside this vector okay this if condition is not true because we are not at the last element again we are back to the first step which is to increment the value of i by one so we'll increment the value of i by one which becomes three and the value of j will remain constant so the first step is completed for this one okay <clears throat> and we are back to this step and here you can see that the value of i is 3 which is this and the value of n is 2 means this if condition got satisfied and we'll be back to this function called stack right so let me remove this from here because this is the case of overflow okay now we are back to this one and for this step one is completed so we need to execute step number two and three so let's execute step number two which is to increment the value of j by one so we'll increment j by one it becomes two comma two right and 
uh, we are back to this step uh, the value of i j m and n is 2 okay but the condition here is not true because 2 is not smaller than 2 so we'll execute this one we'll push a uh, matrix of 2 comma 2 here okay which is 9 which is 9 and now here you can see that the value of all these four coordinates are same okay which is 2 so we'll print the vector we'll print the vector 1 4 5 8 and 9 right these are the elements of this vector and this is the path 1 4 5 8 and 9 and the first one was 1 4 7 8 9 okay this is the first path and this is the second one so this is how actually the function call stack works okay these are the recursive case and this is called backtracking this is called backtracking right so this is how you can print all the possible paths of any particular matrix and here is the code okay so this is exactly the same function that I have written here and okay and we just need to call this function from main and this is for printing that vector okay so let's run this so you can see that one second uh, these are the possible paths 14789 then we have 14589 okay 14589 then 12589 12589 okay so these are the possible paths of this matrix right 